So you know how to play the 12-bar blues, and you know how to play some basic blues soloing. But now, let's learn how to play the 12-bar blues form and solo at the same time. We're going to start with a fairly simple way to do this, and we're going to get more and more complex as we go. This is something that a lot of students struggle with because they want to be able to play the 12-bar form and they want to be able to solo at the same time and they don't know where to start. They start throwing in solos, they start to forget where they are in the 12-bar. And so the way I always teach this is I say, let's just start by choosing one spot in the 12-bar that you're going to solo. So you're going to play the 12-bar form in its simplest way or whatever way you know. It doesn't really matter. But you're always going to solo in this one little spot. And then when you can do that, you choose another spot that you can solo on. And when you can do that, you choose another spot that you can solo on. And over time, you can get more and more complex and you can go back and forth from playing the 12 bar form to the soloing whenever you feel like it and whenever you hear it. But for now, let's just choose one spot. So I'm gonna play this classic blues boogie riff. I call it the boogie riff. Let's go to uh, quick change D, and then we have this. These two bars that I just played are the bars that we're going to use for our little piece of solo. So if I restart, I have my four chord. Now I'm going to hit the A. And I'm going to play a little lick there. Now I have to make sure that the lick that I'm playing only takes up that much space because we know in bar five, the D chord is coming, right? So if I solo too much, we're not gonna be able to play that D chord. And we need to hear all the chord changes of the form. Otherwise, we probably will get lost. But also, it's like our audience, even if it's just an audience of ourselves, we want to hear the chord changes of the 12 bar because that is the song of it, right? So if we just solo wherever, then we're not getting the information of the 12 bar to keep us on track or to hear the song of it. So back to the top, one chord, the boogie riff. The D, hit the A. There's the D, right? The rest is just whatever. Make your life easy. Don't make it too complicated at first. You can, if you know some other 12 bar tricks, play those, whatever. And give yourself a simple walk up, turn around. So now I'm back at the top. My one chord, my four chord. Now here comes my leg. right there it has to be there right if we don't play a D on its B1 we don't hear the 12 bar I'm just gonna go all the way through and do another easy walk up all right here's the one chord the four chord and here's my solo Close, but I got there in time, right? Let's do another one. Now it's the five chord, right? So now I've got two spots I'm soloing on. Do the same thing, whatever. Let's do that again. Here comes the first spot to solo. whatever I like. Just keep it easy for now. So by 
choosing these very specific spots that you can do a little tiny solo in, you get to practice uh, feeling or hearing how much space you have to solo. Because like I say, if you solo too long, then you're going to miss the D chord. And we can do that as long as we can then catch the D chord at the beat that we should be in. We can't, ex we can't extend the 12 bar form at all, right? So for now, make it easy as a way to practice the technique by choosing just start out with just bars three and four. Go through the whole form. And then when you feel kind of comfortable with that, choose bars three and four and also be seven and eight. And notice that those two sections are both for the one chord, for the A in this sense. That's kind of nice too. So we're using the A chord, which we've already heard a lot and we will hear a lot in the 12 bar because it sure covers a lot of the 12 bar. And we're using that to make those moments much more interesting so that it's not just a whole lot of A chord, right? So now let's move up the fretboard and instead of playing the old fashioned boogie riff, we're just gonna play some chords. So I'm gonna play an A7 chord up here. Maybe a D7 chord. And here's my solo space. Now I played A minor pentatonic. Why? Well, in the blues, we can play either a major pentatonic or we can play A minor pentatonic. Or in fact, we can flip back and forth, right? If you check out my video from last week, it will show you in more detail how you can flip back and forth. Um, but for now, since that we're up at the fifth fret, we might as well just use minor pentatonic because let's make it easy. What we're working on right now is being able to feel those two bars of soloing. So make your soloing easy. Don't try anything too complicated until you can really feel precisely those two bars. And then when you really feel the, those two bars, then you can get more and more fancy, right? So now let's try the two spots for soloing, but we'll do it up here at the fifth fret. So I have my A, my D, A, A. D, maybe D7, A. So now let's combine our two ways of doing this that we have so far, and then we'll get even more complicated. But now we're going to combine the open position and major pentatonic. D. Here, fifth fret. A minor. D. Maybe D7 if we like. And back to A. pretty cool because we've gone through the 12 bar twice and the first time we had all this boogie riff and we had major pens on right this is a very different sound than the chord sounds and minor pens tonic so now we've gone 24 bars and we've kept it quite interesting just by doing this little switch from 
open position to fifth fret position doing major pentatonic and then minor pentatonic. So once you start getting comfortable with being able to solo in those two spots, you can add a third spot. We don't always need to play a classic turnaround. I've been playing this. And that's cool, we got millions of them. Maybe not millions, dozens perhaps. But we could use that space to solo as well. Um, so maybe if you're kind of running out of turnaround ideas, just solo there. Because we don't always want to hear a turnaround. Sometimes if we do a turnaround on every single 12 bars, I mean, that comes along so frequently. As great as those turnarounds sound, it can get a little repetitive if you're playing a full song of 12 bar blues with na 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 at the end every single time, right? So we're going to use that space to do our third solo in this whole 12 bar. Let's do it first, doing it in open. So I'm at the top. My four chord. Major pentatonic. D. Back to A. E. So now let's try the three soloing spots, but playing the chords up at the fifth fret and using minor pentatonic. D, D7. seven chord at the very end there if you like so now we have a little solo and we have the five chord and the five chord is very useful at the end because it does tell our ear that we are going to restart the song that we are not ending the song right the five chord always announces the one chord in a sense it tells us we're going there now you can see that we have lots of places where we can solo and we just start adding more and more places as we get used to the easier spots, the easier spots being bars three and four at first, and then bars seven and eight. Those ones are easier because you've got two bars and it's an A chord and they're right before the, a chord switch to a four chord or a five chord. So it also just sounds really good there. So it's a perfect place to practice this technique. So if you haven't seen last week's video, I'm going to put a link to it right here because that one explains in much more detail how to mix and match major pentatonic and minor pentatonic. And thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe. We're doing new videos every Saturday, so we'll see you next week.